Hello, and welcome to another episode of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 here on White Whale Gaming. I am your host, Whale, and in today's episode, we will going o finish going over what we abruptly stopped halfway through last time. I do apologize for that. I had a guy coming to look at a potential insulation problem in the room where I do my recording, and I needed to let him check that out. So now, with that, we will head over to the Ferranis Hulk's Fabricator and see what's up with that. But before we do that, I've temporarily switched from Senna back to Mio, as I wanted to clarify something from last episode. Last episode, I accidentally called Mio Nia. Nia is the Gormati party member from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and it's a pretty easy mistake to make for people who have played Xenoblade Chronicles 2, as Mio greatly resembles, resembles Nia. And on top of that, Nia and Mio both share a commonality in their naming, with Nia being the Japanese automatopoeia for a cat's vocalization, and Meow, which is similar to Mia, Mio, being the English onomatopoeia. Nia, Nia, Mio, Meow. That's all you need to know about Nia outside of a future Xenoblade Chronicles 2 playthrough. So let's... Come on. Who else? Big responsibility. Switch back to Senna. Check out the Fabricator. It's a microfab, the, a hand-operable fabricator commonly installed in older Ferranuses. For a price, we can make the things this Ferranus used to produce. Nifty little gadget, eh? Let's take this thing for a spin, then. Fabricators. Each Ferranus Hulk has a fabricator nearby, which can be made to manufacture collectibles by spending G. They can make very rare and difficult to acquire items. Use money to fabricate items. Required some 300G. We've got 3560. We will proceed. We found plenty of useful stuff here. There was more left behind than I dared hope. I couldn't detect any monster presence around the Ferranus perimeter. Seems like we'll be safe then. Shall we rest here for the day? Ooh, I've still got energy left in the tank. I can take first watch. Senna, acting alone really isn't... Shill shill. Meh. Whoa. What the? Meh. Shill shill is not Nopon of dubious origin. Your colony affiliation and objective tell me quick. Shill shill is traveling trade upon, not bound to any pawn or man. Saw light shining here, so took it upon self to investigate so-called haps. A nup on vagrant, then? Man, is there any way you- anywhere you guys aren't? Why well, have to call vagrant? That word show real lack of respect! You're not with Agnes or Kevis, right? How about itinerant, then? Meh, suppose that's slightly better. Anyhow, friend of sh for any friend that she'll she'll meet soon turn to customer and vice versa. So what kind of things do you sell? Oh, search headgear and bonnet choker and all that jazz. She'll she'll deal in everything. That she'll she'll meet friends here is also fate. She'll she'll give good price, so please to buy lots. I'm a little worried about our finances. You're right, especially since we won't be paid bounties from our colonies anymore. In that case, please do sell any and all things of monetary value to Shill Shill. You sold all your sell-only collectibles to Shill Shill. 
You received 6100 G. Pleasure doing business. You're not gonna buy our tasty sausages. She'll she'll only buy goods which can sell on at high price. Is basic business sense. Wow, suddenly I feel like we got ripped off. It's alright. I think both parties benefited here. I think we might want to make a habit of trading with Nopon like this to earn money. Mehehe! <laughs> Friends feel like becoming regular customers. Heart of Shilshil Soar will be more than happy to buy from friends where, whenever and wherever. What do you mean, wherever? When friends find items, Shilshil can confirm using terminal and wire money right back. Shilshil thank friends not com think friends not complain, yes, yes. Sounds good to me. Hmm, dealing with independent Nopon has the benefit of being untraceable by our former colonies. It sure makes transactions easy. Then it decided, from today on, she'll she'll count friends among own patrons. She'll she'll will abide here for some time. If friends need anything, please to holler. We will, thanks. That's one difficulty taken care of. Yeah. Alright, time we finally got some rest. Okay, so we got more of a, a base tutorial. The Hillside Hulk complete. Using the filled ether cylinders, the party rebooted the dilapidated machine and claimed its treasure for themselves. 600 experience, which we will not be cashing in on, 5 more SP, which we still do not know what it is for, and no additional rewards. The gold reward for that quest was the 6100 we sold to Shilshil. Thank me very much for my incessant slaughter of the local wildlife on the way over. Auto-selling items. Sell-only items will be automatically sold to Shilshil, the Nopon trader, as you acquire them. If you can't carry any more, they'll simply disappear. Nopon coins can be traded for items at Nopon coin exchanges. They can also be used for collectopedia requests, cooking, gem crafting, and leveling up classes. Ah. Shilshil has a questy pawn for us. Questy pawn, is that a word now? Shilshil had quite the entourage. We're surrounded by a bunch of Nopon! You know what this means? <laughs> Cuteness overload! <laughs> Nopon are sort of the mascots of the Xenoblade series, and have appeared in all four games, including the spin-off X. However, as I stated earlier, in that game, they were pronounced with the very cringeworthy Nopon pronunciation. We need to rest at the Ferranus Hulk. For the main progression, but first let's see what Trader Pawn has to offer. Welcomes! We can buy search headgear, crit rate by five percentage points. I want to say that's different than just by increasing it by like five percent. This appears to be additive. I'll buy one to test it out. Shimmer's Chemist increases ether defense by five percentage points. Boost ag- oh yeah, ether defense. It's looking like it's going to be just a percentage base as opposed to a value that got, gives you a percentage reduction. Or maybe it'll be this adds us a flat 5% to whatever percentage your value gives you. I really got to look into the stats and see more. Bunnet Choker boosts aggro reduction over time by 50%. Not the best, but it can help on a healer. Harvest Necklace boosts, boosts amount of HP healed from using healing arts by 10%. That's a good item for Tyon or Uni. Defense Cuffs boosts aggro reduction by 25% when targeted by an enemy. This just boosts how fast you lose aggro naturally. This boosts probably all sources of aggro reduction when being targeted. Every time you're dealt damage by an en enemy, it will reduce your aggro. 
from that enemy, as well as this, you'll naturally degrade aggro over time while, while being targeted, or I believe just in general. Friendship Ring reduces aggro gener generated from healing arts by 15%, also useful for uni and tie-on, as healing, I believe, has a higher base aggro stat than damage. Colorful Feather, feather accrues aggro every second, minor effect. This is useful. I believe this will also make whoever it's, it's equipped on start with some aggro accumulated. So it might be useful on tanks like Mio and Lans for just having them take the aggro automatically. Wing Necklace recovers 40% of recharge for own arts upon reviving an ally. Reviving can only be done by healers in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, so it is locked to healers. Currently just Uni and Tyon. And that is what the Trader Pawn has. I don't see any... I'll get a colorful feather. I, I might try it out. And if we look through our collectibles, we should see no scale icons as we scroll down. Sorry about the little burp there. Uh, had a glass of water to wet the whistle before starting this recording, and... Uh, that gives me a little bit of air bubbles that need to escape sometimes. Yep, nothing that hasn't already been sold. We can also sell just accessories we don't need anymore. Apprentice Van Braces we got from a collectible card. We're definitely not going to sell those. They're not so useful now, but they will be very useful late in the game. I'm basically going to sell common accessories like the... Uh, Anything that does, well, yeah, that black mask that does, like, boosts damage to specific types of enemies. Nopon Doll seems a, a heavy weak guard. A legendary at that. Wind Leg Frame. Don't remember exactly where we got all these from, but... Boost damage dealt by 30% for the first 30 seconds of the battle. That would be useful right now. Extending topple duration could be good on lands. We have a rare variant of this, and I'm sure we'll find more later. But I'll... So, actually, no, I'm going to keep it. I am going to sell this rare bronze temple guard. I don't like temple guards at all. We need to get a better accessory for Senna. Because we don't have very much launch capability right now. Actually, I'm going to put the wind leg frame on her. I am going to do that change now. And I'm also going to test out on Noah. Okay, Senna. You get the wind leg frame. I'm just going to clear away these others. Oh, we have a couple tool belts we can sell. I'm going to test out on Noah very quickly to see... Yes, it adds a flat percentage, not multiplying by 5%. But we are going to switch back to our... Chrome Scarf. And there are actually a couple more accessories we're going to sell to the Trader Pawn now. I'm still going to keep this Apprentice Van Braces. Going to keep these. White wraps. I'm actually going to sell those. Tool belts. The feather bands are also like that. There's our rare Apprentice Van Braces. Uni has a rare Harvest Necklace. Black Mask. We sold a common one of those. I see no reason to keep the uh, rare. I'm going to keep one of these rare attack stones. Just because auto attack damage will accrue more aggro on a tank if it's doing 58% more damage. It'll also roughly be accruing 58% more aggro. Shell Protector. Boost block rate by 31% when HP is at 30% or lower. Blocks don't do very much. I don't like blocks. You... You might want to keep this if you do like block builds, but I think they're pretty, you know, weak. Beast Fang Necklace. Boost damage dealt when attacking enemies targeting you by 16%. Black Mask. Damage dealt to terrestrial life by 60. 
Reduces aggro generated from healing arts by 20%. That could be decent. Sell the tool belt, of course. Sell the light weak guard. Yeah. This is going to be one of the few times you see me do a bit of accessory tinkering on camera, so you can see sort of what I'm going for on these builds. Mio is going to get switched over to, uh, where is it? The Beast Fang Necklace. I'd rather have, instead of slightly more dodges from her, have her deal more damage when aggroed by enemies. Or when enemies are aggroed to her, so she can provide some better support that way. Tyon currently gets boosted healing by 20%. That's his boosting healing power. I feel like right now I'd have rather have Ty Tyon generating less aggro than he is right now. So we're going to give him the friendship ring. Now we're going to talk to Shilshil. Hello, customer. Can Shilshil request favor in return for handsome reward? What kind of favor? It's not big favor. Shilshil only making register of friends. How does that work, then? Caravan of Shilshil, not only not on caravan in world, you know. Shilshil have many compatriots in many place. Shilshil now trying to make formal register of said chums. You're a traveler. Just do it yourself as you go along, innit? Well, Shilshil want very much to do this, but currently waiting for teacher. So Shilshil stuck here. Favor is this, if you choose to accept. Talk to Nopon merchants like Shilshil when you see them. We can do that. Shilshil, no friends have what it takes. It's a bit weird to ask people you barely know to do this, but whatever. There are 19 caravan in all. What? That's loads. But there's so many Nopon who cooperate like Shilshil and Mimu will not be problem. Talk to Nopon about requests and friends get stone like this. Come back when all are collected. And we obtained a yellow Nopon pebble. A yellow stone? Not only yellow, but red and blue, too. She'll, she'll want you to collect all. I believe they call this mission creep. Thank you for kindness. You really helping Nopon in need. All right, we accept. Just as long as you're not in any kind of hurry. Right, we can certainly keep an eye out. Nop on register. This is already seeming like it's going to be a really long one. I don't know if this series is going to be able to do a guide on this. Other than I will call them out when I see them. And Shilshil now has something new to say to us. Sell valuable materials to Shilshil in exchange for monies. Heavy items also. We'll save on bother of selling at Caravan. Excellent. That sounds like an efficient approach. Meh, but friends should not forget completely about Caravan. Stop by for extra shoppings there. I believe that insignia we just saw there was affinity with Nopon Caravans. It's been a while since we've seen anything affinity related. In fact, it's been since we became an outlaw of both nations. Well, since before then that we've seen any affinity gains. Now with that, let's play around to the Fabricator one more time. 300G. For a random selection of collectibles from this Veranus. I thought this was going to be more like a crafting system and less like a put money in, and this dead titan here randomly spits out crap. But, oh well. I'm glad... In a way, though, I'm a little glad there's not really a uh, crafting system. They can get a little tedious 
and a little confusing, particularly on a first playthrough. Now we will rest. Can we maybe train? We are not going to level up. I still don't know what clean clothes does. Huh. There we go. And now we're going to rest. Ugh, I'm dead on. No, no, no! More to the right! Right there! Start lowering! Make sure it's airtight! Stand around here, finer than Ruska flower. I could do a triple weld. Sure, long as the output's stable. Yes, sir! What's up with the K-Rounds? We're two caches short. Hope you didn't snuff up the order. I don't know, okay? Got a problem, take it up with logistics. We're just a dirt rank colony. Low as they come. You think the castle gives a crap? A queen's oath, this pisses me off. We get better scores than any sparking colony out there. Did you know? For ten rank field rations, I hear they get Arden meat. Really? And us mudders? Trust me, you really don't want to know. <sighs> I miss the good old silver days. Didn't have to rely on rations back then. We had cooks come and serve us right on the front line. Used to get Armu sirloin, we did. Seriously? Uh, hey! What now? My own indiscretion has caused you difficulties. I'm sorry. No! Uh, we would never... Our apologies, uh, Commander Ethel. That was all, uh, just banter. Believe me, we had no intention of... You enjoyed eating our mistake, did you? Uh... Yes, I did. Tastiest food I ever ate. I liked it as well. And I hope we will have it again. So lend me your strength. Mom! Yes, Mom! I don't see what's wrong with Wolf, personally. <laughs> That's because you have poor taste. I'm jealous. Oh, well. Trade you my taste buds? No, thank you. My mouth had turned as foul as yours. <laughs> True that. They cleared out real fast. I hear the attending consul is a particularly punctual sort of character. Please, not another stickler for the rules. Can't be long now. Yep. Got about five minutes to go. Whoa! Well, well, Consul dear. Your reputation certainly precedes you. A hover type? I mean, did they not get the memo about the terrain here? <coughs> oh, why is it so insufferably dusty around here? Clearly, 
place befits its dirt rank status. The rainy season will soon be upon us. I ask your patience for just this short while. Is that so? Then, leaving aside the issue of cleanliness, just what is with all this fog? I don't take kindly to my vision being obfuscated. Oh, forget it. So, where are my quarters? Yes, this way. Filthy room. How the dirt rack has fallen. I suppose that would be something to take up with the castle. Alpharonis is an old model. I understand your displeasure. But please don't escalate this. Do I detect some defiance? No, no, that, that was never my... Relax, girl, I jest. Now then. Let's cut the chit-chat and talk business. I'd like you to eradicate some vermin for me. Vermin? By your leave, sir, we've detected no movement from Agni and Pharonesis around this area. Not Agnes. People. Soldiers. A band of deserters from both sides. Well, something like that. Agnes and Kethis, both. <laughs> I think it's best you see for yourself. Hmm. This is expressly at the Queen's behest. Don't foul this up. Looking at something? Oh, nothing in particular, really. It's just kind of a habit. Checking our status, the war. Watching for info updates. Silly. <laughs> I don't know why I still bother to check it anymore. Not like there'd be updates. Oh. What is it? An icon just popped up. Over your head. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now I can see an icon for you as well. When did we unlock a feature like this? I've never noticed it before. Yours seems to be the only one not locked. Huh? What? Like a sparking light bulb. I guess there must still be more to this feature. Hey, that's Mimi's. What in the blazes? I've never used this kind of blade before, but all the techniques I can use with it are flashing before my eyes. So weird. Not like we suddenly just gain the knowledge out of the blue, but as if it were always ingrained deep within us. Strange. Oh, doesn't look like I can get Mimi's gear. Now well, that's a shame. Hmm. This it. <gasps> How come I got Moody guts and not Noah's, huh? That's what I'd like to know. Your class is the only one I can seem to pick, unfortunately. Whoa! 
You can lug this thing about without a power frame. Not bad. Don't know how this is even working, but cool. But is this all part of Ouroboros too? If it gives us more options in battle, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I want to take this new blade out for a spin. From here, we head due south, right? Perfect. We can test them out on the road. Changing classes. Go to character's class to change a character's class. Every class has its quirks and characteristics, so be sure to play around with as many as you can. Upon winning a battle, you will receive class points, CP, that will increase your class rank. The quickest way to increase class rank is to continually use one class. Go to character's arts in the main menu to set up a character's master arts. Master art settings. By raising the rank of a character's class, you can eventually master that class's arts. If you switch to another class, you can set those arts into master art subslots. The number of available subslots will increase as your characters gain levels. Also note that Kavesi classes can only set Agnian class master art class arts as master arts, and vice versa. Setting master skills, as your class raises rank rises, you'll start to gain mastery of the skills it wields. Mastered skills can be used independent of class. You can set skills mastered on other classes from the main menu character's skills. As you raise your level, you'll be able to set more master skills up to maximum of three. Change around someone's class. Okay, you can change cla the classes of individual characters. Next, you'll want to select Class. A list of available classes is displayed on the right side of the screen. Assign Noah the Zephyr class. Medic Gunner is currently locked. I don't know what these... Letters below it mean. I'll protect you. Now let's change Mio's class to Sword Fighter. I'm fine with attacking. Let's change Uni's class to Tactician. I'll heal you right up. Change Tyon to Medic well, Gunner. Change lands to ogre. So I gotta whack him. I can do that. And Senna to heavy guard. I'll take real good care of the bad guys. Now that Noah's class has been switched to Zephyr, let's set up his master arts. It's time to set up our master arts. First select Noah. R to go back around. Master Arts are set up from the Arts menu. Arts. To the left of the regular slots are the Master Art sub-slots. We have one at the moment. And we have Ground Beat and Shadow Eye that have been mastered. Mastering an art with another class and setting it here will allow you to use it while playing as another class. We're going to set Ground Beat as Shadow Eye reduces aggro and is naturally incompatible with a tank class. Ground beat. Let's set Wide Slash to Mio's Master Arts. Yeah, so the arts appear to be class specific, not class and character specific, unfortunately. And wide Slash is the evasion art that it wants us to set. Wide slash. Let's set Myopic Screen to Uni's Master Arts. A very good one to set. Myopic screen. And Dark Banner to Tyon's Master Arts. 
Okay, this is one that places down... No, it makes it sleep. He doesn't have his... Evasion Ring Master Bull yet. Crash out to lands his Master Art. Crash Art is... Uh, crash Out, uh, sorry, is unfortunately not his Topple Art. And Giant Swing. Yeah, it's Bull Rush we want to be able to set. We want to set Giant Swing. Giant Swing! Okay, yeah, Giant Swing has an effect from the front, I want to say. Once you finish assigning your Master Arts, we can now move to, on to setting up Master Skills. Okay. What is Giant Swing exactly? Uh, it just has knockback. It's not the, uh... It's not the, uh, bonus from the front. Okay, first, let's R to select Noah. Master skills can all be set from the skills reaction. Set a master skill. Skills have their own designated slots. The only one we can set right now is Cypher Edge. Boost critical rate by 20%. Let's set Split Second Counter to Mio's Master Skills. Okay. Split Second Counter deals 150% of attack damage when you evade an attack. Set a Master Skill. Let's set Ninja Healer to be Uni's Master Skill. Reduces aggro generated from healing arts by 40%. Okay. Ether ability boosts damage dealt by ether arts by 40%. To Tyons, I set defensive soul to lands as master skills. Boosts physical defense by 15%. And let's set fighting prowess. Boosts damage dealt by physical arts by 40%. Now that you've finished setting up your master skills, exit the menu. Now, let's see. Will the uh, game force us to play as Zephyr Noah for this next segment? You will not be able to change classes or edit master arts for a time. These options will become unlocked again after you progress in the main story. And no, we are not locked into uh, Noah. But since Senna is no longer the ogre of the party, Big responsibility. we are actually going to switch to lands because I wanted to see how the ogre plays. Ogre is the other attacker class alongside Noah's sword fighter. Let's roll the... the... Ferranis gotcha again and see what we get. That seems like a good... Okay. Nop on register, we're gonna... How about here instead? Elimination, defeat the specified foes. Head south of Asia and test your power on some Bodum Grebels. We have to... I guess this is just a tryout playing as the opposite member of the pair's class. Oh, hey, Rotbart. Well, not... Well, hey, Notbart. Okay, that's his new nickname. He's now Notbart, because he's not Territorial Rotbart, but also he is the Territorial Rotbart of this game. Good, he's turning around. Once again, Crustips are jerks, so we're going to assist the Brogs. All right. Come 
Ah, and you bring out the weapon for your class when you're using your master arts. No spoils for the second time around. But once again, Crustips are jerks. So we're going to help out the not jerks. We do not get to see Ogre's talent art in that fight. Let's find something a bit meatier to test it out on. Once we've seen Ogre's talent art, we'll switch over to Tyon, or I guess Uni, as Uni is now using Tyon's class. Let's, uh, lure the big Broggers this way. Hey, big Broggers. Alright, this is going to be a little difficult because the other Brog got drawn in anyway. Still on the side. And that is the talent art. We are going to switch to tie on. Drop a power ring here for Noah. We'll bring up Noah. And that's defeat. I thought I was unstoppable. Frogs are officially jerks too. But Crustips are jerks, so we're not going to help either of them this time. Okay. Like I said, I still don't necessarily like the, uh, uh, the healer gameplay in, in Xenoblade 3. Let's see if we can not bring the other Broggers into this fight this time. And we fuse an art together, so I believe that gave us both effects. Keep up the attack. Smooth as always, Noah. 
All right. Oh, Land's got a launch off. Nice. Keep everyone topped up a little bit here. And we got our vengeance. Did you see me in action, Mimi? Sure I did, Santa. You look great. We also need to get our vengeance on this guy, because he was also part of the Brog party. Oh, that took us down. Dazem? Let's give our tanks the power ring. Help them keep aggro better. I have no idea how aggro actually works in this game. I'm still going off the assumption that it's similar to previous titles. Here we go, guys. Let's give him the usual, Noah. Days it. Now this indiscreet Gombaba is going to be. A challenge. Let's keep everyone topped up. Top people off. All right. Keep people topped up. Let's drop down our heal right on top of the attack buff. Attack, event, evasion, and regenerate. Let's do another fusion here. I think that just adds the two attacks into one. Okay. If Mio could just get a break off here, we could get Schmoovin. Okay. Let's throw down the healing ring on top of the attack ring again. Cancel our fusion.
place down the field. Alright. Hey, Noah, get in the circle. Okay, good. Noah's standing in the ring. We're gonna give a burst to healing there. And that, everyone, is our first conquest of a unique monster on the channel. And that was our first instance of finding a gold Nopon coin in-game. And with that, I'm going to call that here for this episode of Xenoblade Chronicles 3. In the next episode, we will continue progressing towards our objective, which is 158 meters ahead of us in the direction the camera is pointed now. Until then, I have been your host, Whale. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subbing to the channel. As usual, comments are welcome down below. I hope you all are having a great day, and until next time, goodbye.